the first original mark of the beast. Because nowhere did Lucifer lie about the word. He just talked the church into questioning the word. Listen to me. Leave it alone. If it's written, it is written. I don't want to make you mad, but let's get rid of this junk that we want to question everything that our pastors teach and preach. Question every conviction. Question every doctrine. Stop questioning it and start obeying it. Let me just tell you, ain't, ain't, ain't a devil in Malaysia big enough to scare me right now. Uh, we, we might as well just start off and I'll just make everybody mad tonight. 18 months ago, my wife and I were having a cup of coffee together. And Brother Zen, we looked at each other and we said, here's the deal for the rest of our life. Here's our deal. We make a pact. We're going to live long enough to make the devil more afraid of us than we've ever been of him. And I got a feeling that one of the reasons that all kinds of hell happened on that side of the trip to stop me from getting on this side of the trip is for me not to preach what I'm preaching right here tonight and try to shake some of you to wake up to realize you're not some weak, anemic, powerless church, but you are the living, breathing church of Jesus Christ. You have power, authority, and dominion in this present world. So, I know it's probably bad juju, but I do it anyway. So, every now and then, my wife and I will link arms, Brother Hughes, and we'll, if we're on a platform somewhere, we'll do it at our home church. We'll do it across the front, and we'll just link arms, and we'll just strut across the platform like we're bad. And the only th message I'm trying to send is it's been a bad day. It's been a bad week. Got some bad reports. But, devil, you ain't big enough to intimidate me. You ain't bad enough to scare me. I refuse to accept what you're trying to sell me. You're a liar and the father of lies. The name is greater and the blood is more powerful. The church is alive. There's miracles in the church. I wish some of you would develop an attitude that says, I've listened to the lies of hell, all I intend to. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in yeah. yes. Nehemiah builds the walls. Nehemiah returns. He establishes the government of God back in Jerusalem. Everything looks good. Send battle and Tobiah tried to intimidate him. They tried to get him off the wall. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. They tried to intimidate him. They tried to get him off the wall. He says, I'm doing a good work. I don't have time to come down. Are you with me? Yes. Come on down. Talk with us. Can't. He said, matter of fact, from here on out, I'm going to put 50 men on the wall. 25 is going to carry a sword. 25 is going to carry a trial. They're going to work while others watch. We're going to pray and watch. We're going to watch and pray. We're going to work and pray. That's how we're going to build a wall. And the Bible says in 52 days, they finished the wall. And the celebration of all celebrations began. The wall was done. And the enemy said, if you do this this quick, a fox will run across it and it'll fall. It won't work. And Nehemiah said, don't you worry about it. God's in this. God's in this. Malaysia, God's in this country. God's in this tabernacle. God's in this church. God's in this nation. God's in this building. God's in your life. God is in right here tonight. God is here. Devil can't stop it. Principalities can't stop it. Demons can't stop it because God is present. I preached like this one time in the country of Africa. And in the night, there was an earthquake in my hut. And when I awakened to the earthquake, there were things in my room swirling and swimming. There were voices and creatures in my room. One stood at the foot of my bed and said, you have awakened the beast. And we're here to kill you, blah, 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 blah. They scared, they almost scared Jesus out of me. They scared me that bad. Guy I was traveling with next door to me, come running over, beating on my, my door, said, Pastor, are you all right? My God, it's an earthquake. It's an earthquake. Are you all right? He busted in the door. He screams like, like a little sissy girl and <laughs> runs out. And I'm laying there thinking, man, I'm, I'm fixing to die. This thing's fixing to get me. I mean, I have really, I've stirred the pot. And something in me said, all you got to do is just cast him out of here, tell him to go on and go to bed. And all of a sudden I realized 
and the name is greater, the blood is more powerful, you can't do anything or you would have already done it. You're not going to wake me up to tell me you're going to kill me. My God, if he's telling you what he's going to do, he can't do it. You're going to wake up tonight. I'm not going to quit preaching until you do. And so I just kind of sat up in the bed and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to go. I... You understand I'm still here tonight, right? You know the end of the story. What he said he was going to do, he can't do. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in What are you doing, Nehemiah? It's been a while. It's been about 14 years. I'm going to go back and check on the wall. Are you with me? I'm done. Sounds like a Morgan, doesn't it? Five more minutes. Don't tell him I say this stuff. Leave it alone. <laughs> Nehemiah rose back in. And he says, this is in the 12th or 13th chapter of the book of Nehemiah. He goes to the temple and he says, what is this? I don't have time to preach it. Just let me allude to it. He said, what is this junk? And the preacher says, we made a room for Tobias, the guy that said it couldn't be done. We made him a room in the church. Don't you look at me, apostolics? You better get rid of Tobias's room. Because if you leave place in your mind for a God who might, can't do it, it'll never be done. But if you can wake up tonight to the fact that God is in you and in this church... And there's nothing God can't do. Then there's nothing God won't do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thank you, all nine of you. What have you done? Uh, Nehemiah, the Bible says that Nehemiah grabbed all of Tobias's junk. I don't, want to, I don't want to break something I can't afford to buy. The Bible says he took all of Tobias' stuff and threw it in the streets. He went to church and got rid of doubt, unbelief. God help the church be cleansed of our level of doubt and unbelief. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. I ask or think according to the power. I ask God in these next 72 hours to do something to the country of Malaysia in this church that would relieve us of all of our doubt that he would walk among us and say you don't need that and you don't need that and you don't need that what you need is a red hot fire what you need is a red hot prayer meeting what you need is some authority to speak Nehemiah what are you doing you're acting like a fool I'm sick of having church this way I'm sick of trying to have church this way you're not supposed to have church like this. You got too much clutter. You got too much junk. Get rid of it. I feel like in the last two or three years of my life, I'm on a mandate to get rid of the junk in the North America church. We've got too much junk, and we're trying to have church with junk, and you don't need junk to have church. We need God. Something's happening right now. 
There's a birthing of something supernatural right now. The Holy Ghost is visiting this place right now. What we've been waiting on is here right now. What the prophets prophesied about is here right now. The Holy Ghost is here. Don't stop prophesying. Don't stop pray. Don't stop worship. Clap your hands. Travail. Intercede. Do something. Go on, Peter. Go on, Peter. Don't wait on Christ to do it. Don't wait on an angel from heaven to say it. You know what needs to be done. You know the princes and the principalities of this region. Speak against it. You know what's going on in your life. Curse it. Speak against it in the name of Jesus. I want you to freeze wherever you're at. Stop right here. Now, if you are under the age of 40 and you have the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name, would you just raise your hand? Leave your hand up. Okay. Now, leave your hand up. The majority of the hands are still sitting down. Now, I want to talk to you a minute. Stay where you're at. Don't anybody sit down. Don't anybody stand up. Listen to me. Nehemiah starts walking. And the first place he goes is they get the book of law. And he reads where Moses said some stuff. And he turns from what Moses instituted in the church. And he carried it into the assembly. And he got rid of the room of Tobias. And he got rid of the junk that was in the church. And he went as far as to say, you lazy preachers. Don't get quiet now. Afraid you're going to make somebody mad so you're afraid to preach it. So afraid you're going to lose something. So you, he said, you, you, you've collected the tithe and the offering, but you've not sent it. Something's wrong when we can have church where it's only what we get. We're selfish. It's supposed to be about what we release. Stay with me. I'm done. Stay with me. So Nehemiah cleanses, renews. And then it's one verse and it's, it's, it's on my iPad, but if I open it up, we'll be here all night. It's about the 13th or the 14th verse after he's cleansed, after he's restored, after he's got the preachers fired back up, after he's got the church in the pews, got everybody right. He walked among the church and he said, the number one problem with God's church in Jerusalem is the young people. And he made a statement that if God gives me the platform, I'm going to scream it as loud as I can scream it. He said, the problem with the church now is the young people have forgotten the language of the Jews. They have married Am Ammon, Moab, and they've taken on their language. And Nehemiah said... The church is not supposed to have church like others. They're supposed to have church their own way, their own language. Look at me, young people that didn't stand. 
You do not need the Assemblies of God pattern or a charismatic pattern or another organization's pattern. I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to say it. We've got to return to the language that our parents spoke. I don't expect you to like me much tonight, but that's okay. You won't forget me. This junk that we're talking, half this and half that.